بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا يا كريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الله أكبر 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 لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and the adverse consequences of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees guidance upon, then none can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees misguidance upon, then none can guide him. And peace and salutations be upon the final messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. Respected ulama, my beloved brothers and fathers and mothers and sisters, I greet you with the greetings of peace on a blessed day of goodness and peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Indeed, this day is a day of happiness. And even more so for myself. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted me the opportunity on this blessed day to address a community that I consider myself a son of for the first time on this particular Eid due to my absence for the past 10 years on this particular day. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our time together a blessed one. One that is an act of worship. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a gathering that hears a good word and follows it. And a gathering that is forgiven upon its departure. Ameen. O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything in creation. And from the universal sunan, and ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants a special status and rank to certain parts of His creation over others. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels and He gave a special rank and honor and status to Jibreel alayhi salam and Mikail alayhi salam and Israfil alayhi salam. And as he created these three angels, he gave a special rank and status to one of them, an even higher rank and status. And that was to Jibreel alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind. And he granted a special rank and honor and status and precedence to a few from mankind over others. Thus he chose his Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam, his prophets, and he gave them a rank and honor over the rest of creation. And from these prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose a few from them and gave them too a special rank and status and honor. And this was to the prophets of absolute resolution, the prophets that were known as Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, Nuh alayhi salam, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Musa alayhi salam, and Isa alayhi salam, and Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from these Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, these prophets of absolute resolution, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from amongst them, raised some of them in rank over others. Thus, he chose Ibrahim alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave them the title of Khalilullah. And from these two prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
gave a special precedence and rank to one of them, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and titled him the seal of all prophets. And in this way, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the places. And He gave a special precedence and rank to certain places over others. Thus He chose Mecca, and He chose Medina, and He chose Sham, and He declared these lands to be blessed lands. And in the same breath, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a special precedence and rank to certain portions of time over others. Thus He created the nights of the year. And He gave a special precedence and rank to the last ten nights during the month of Ramadan. And He created the last ten nights during the month of Ramadan and gave a special precedence to Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all the months and He gave a special precedence and rank to the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the days of the year. And He gave a special precedence and rank to the first ten days of the Hijjah. And in these days He gave a special honor and status to the day of Arafah. And like this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the days of the week. And He gave a special honor and rank to a day known as the day of Jumu'ah. The best day upon which the sun rises. أَفْضَلُ يَوْمٍ طَلَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسِ يَوْمْ الْجُمُعَةِ And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the days of the year, Allah gave a special precedence and rank to two days. Two days that will return to the ummah. Year after year, with blessings, with goodness, and with happiness. And these two days are known as the days of Eid. Eid al-Fitr, a day which we experienced not so long ago. A day about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى According to a group of the scholars of tafsir, they say this ayah substantiates this and makes manifest this particular day. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the successful one is the one who offers the zakah. And they say the zakah here refers to zakatul fitr. وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ And he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the takbir on the day of Eid, فَصَلَّى And he observed the salah of Eid. The salah of Eid al-Fitr. And the other day of Eid known as Eid al-Abha. A day about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ That observe the salah, this salah or the salah of Eid and offer the sacrifice. And that is why the scholars say that it was from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to legislate the zakatul fitr to occur and be observed before the salah of Eid. For that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cited it in that ayah. And on this day of Eid, it was from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to observe the salah of Eid first and then observe the sacrifice. Because in the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the salah and then the sacrifice. وَاللَّهُ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates what He wants and He grants a rank and honor and precedence to that which He wishes subhanahu wa ta'ala. This day, O servants of Allah, is one of those two days. One of those two recurring days. Those days that recur with blessings and goodness and happiness. A day in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about when he visited Medina. And he saw the people of Medina playing on two days. And he asked them that what is being celebrated? And they say these are two days in which we play. These are two days in which we play. And we celebrate. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَبْدَلَكُمَا بِهِمَا خَيْرًا مِّنْهُمَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has replaced these two days with two better days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in His obedience. And make us from amongst those that witness these recurring days of happiness and blessedness and goodness year after year. Ameen.
O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, these two days encapsulate and celebrate values of the two great prophets, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And as I was gathering my thoughts for today's lecture, I was thinking of which values I could share with you all, because it's impossible to share even three of the values of these great prophets. And one value that could not help but stand out was the value of selflessness. This was a great value that existed in great amounts in the lives of these prophets. If we look at the life of Ibrahim السلام, we just heard in the Fajr Salah an ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes manifest the selflessness of Ibrahim السلام. And when we talk about selflessness, this is the opposite of selfishness. This is the ability to place the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before our whims and fancies and desires. The ability to place the comfort of somebody else before our own comfort. The ability to answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on time, every time. This is what is referred to as selflessness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ibrahim alayhi salam. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him through a dream that he should place a knife on the neck of his son and slaughter the son for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he turned to his son and he said, إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى He spoke to his son and said, My dear son, indeed I see that I am slaughtering you. So what do you have to say about this? And his son Ismail alayhi salam turned to his father and said, قَالَ يَا أَبَتِي إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرُ سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ He said to his father, and this is another act of selflessness, that, oh my dear father, do that which you have been commanded to do, for inshaAllah you will find me from the patient. From the patient. And that is why the scholars say patience is of three types. To be patient when it comes to remaining upon the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we have shaitan pulling us away from following this command, and our nafs pulling us away from following this command. We need patience to remain upon it. And then we need patience to stay away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us against. For shaitan is calling us towards that evil and vice. And our nafs is calling us towards that evil and vice. So we need patience to stay away from it. And patience, the third type, when a calamity afflicts us, when we have to be patient. This patience known as as sabr al ittirari There's two types of sabr. as sabr al ikhtiyari wa sabr al ittirari Right? A patience when you choose to be patient, and a patience when you have to be patient. Ismail alayhi salam made this type of patience manifest. He said, Insha'Allah, you will find me patient with regards to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was a great act of selflessness. An act worthy of great rewards. And thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with an act that will be celebrated year after year as we find ourselves doing today. The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offering a sacrifice, depicting an act that was beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Selflessness that was beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when that knife touched that neck, Allah says, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ That we saved him and made in place of himself being sacrificed a ram. The second sacrifice or act of selflessness is, and, and that which is specific to this day, is from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every year in Medina would sacrifice. And in the Sahih Dhaha, Bikabshayni, Amlahayni, Aqranayni, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sacrificed. 
two horned rams, white and black in color. Healthy rams. He placed his feet on its sides and he said, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And he slaughtered these animals. One animal for him and the family of Muhammad. And the other animal for the poor from amongst the Muslimi. An act of selflessness where he did not forget the impoverished, the destitute, those who don't enjoy that greater financial standing and material well-being. And it is at this juncture, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, that we must ask a question. That when we listen to these acts of selflessness, and we are celebrating this day that encapsulates the values of selflessness, what is, if we benchmarked ourselves to these two narrations, how close are we to the realm of selflessness, and how far are we from it? Are we the people of me, myself and I? Or are we the people who live for the sake of Allah? And do for the sake of Allah? And leave for the sake of Allah? Like Ibrahim alayhi salam and the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. Are we those who are good Muslims only when it suits us? Charitable with that which we no longer consider valuable? Is it a case whereby we will only send our beloved, our children, to study Islam only when they lack that form of diligence in schools, for example. Where are we with regards to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how appropriate are we with them? Are we selfish or are we selfless? And to highlight this point more and help us enter this realm of selflessness, we must understand the difference between sacrifice and investment. Sacrifice and investment. If we do this, if we shift our paradigms with regards to this, inshallah, our ability to enter the realm of selflessness will become easier bithillahi ta'ala. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us Muslims, He gave us an amazing potential. A potential that a non-Muslim does not have. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this ummah the best of everything. He gave us the best book through the best angel to the best prophet, in the best language, on the best night, in the best month, and in the best of all places, the best of everything. And in this book he declared this ummah, those that believe and invite towards good and prevent from evil, he declared them the best of all nations. La ilaha illallah. The potential that we have with La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah is endless. To become the best, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, we have to understand the difference between sacrifice and investment. Because sacrifice refers to two things. One which we will experience today, where we slaughter an animal. Linguistically, the term sacrifice applies to this act. But in terms of meaning, and that which applies to us on a daily basis, we normally consider sacrifice that which we do that has no immediate return, in this dunya. Something which we've given up. A speaker will speak and it will be announced at the end, we thank so and so for sacrificing his time. Is this not common? Somebody offers some service for the sake of Allah and he is thanked for sacrificing his time. Somebody donates some money and he is thanked for sacrificing his wealth. But in retrospect, this is not a sacrifice. This is an investment. And I know we like the term investment better. Right? Right? This is what which is, is more palatable to us, given our attachment to financial standing and material well-being. O servants of Allah, you can only sacrifice something which you own. You cannot sacrifice that which you don't own. And with regards to this time that we have, and this wealth that we have, we are not owners of it. We will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and answer with regards to how we used it. If we were owners of it, why should we be answerable? And the reality is that we do not own it. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purchased it from us in a transaction that included Jannah. Allah purchased our time and He purchased our wealth our life and our wealth in exchange for Jannah. So we are owners of Jannah and not owners of this time and wealth. If I gave you $5,000 for example, and I said, look, next week I'm going to call you and I'm going to instruct you to give it to such and such a person. 
Do you have the right when you deliver this 5,000 to tell this person, I'm sacrificing $5,000? You don't. Because you don't own this wealth. And this is the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns this wealth and time. And He distributed it amongst us with wisdom. So He gave some or lent some more wealth. And lent some more time. And lent some less wealth. And lent some less time. And he revealed books and he sent prophets to instruct us how to use this time and wealth. And if we used it appropriately, it will be a means to our Jannah becoming more beautiful for us. Allah doesn't need us to prostrate for His majesty to be increased, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah's majesty is not decreased if we leave His worship, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was the creator before He created and never needed to create to be known as the creator. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to be diligent with this time and wealth. And when we used it as He commanded, who benefited? We benefited. We benefited. More trees were planted for us in Jannah. More streams were dug for us in Jannah. More houses were built for us in Jannah. And by Allah, I ask you, if you spent your time and wealth for the sake of Allah, and Allah gave you this in return, is this a sacrifice or is this an investment? Sacrifice or investment? Investment. Investment. We gave Allah one, He multiplied it 700%. Which investment of the dunya can give you this? But we do sacrifice sometimes. And that is when we lack diligence with this wealth. And we lack diligence with this time. We are sacrificing something. And we just said we can only sacrifice that which we own. We can only sacrifice that which we own. So we are sacrificing something. And that is our paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. When we lack diligence with this time and wealth, there is a sacrifice that takes place. And that is a person sacrificing the greater. The greater because of the lesser, the perpetual, because of the temporary, the akhirah, because of the dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. If we understand this, O servants of Allah, we have a greater inclination towards becoming selfless. Because a believer never lives till the grave. A believer lives till beyond the grave. A believer is one that when they walk in this dunya, there are ripples that are felt in the akhirah. It has to be like this. Everything we do in this dunya has to be for the betterment of our hereafter. It's like if I throw a stone in a pond, the ripple should transcend to the end of the pond. This is the way we need to live in this dunya. That whatever we say and whatever we do, there's some shaking and some happening that's happening in our Jannah for us. This is selflessness. This is living for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Al Wahid al Qahar. Al Ahad. Al Fard al Samad. Al Ladi lam Yalid wa lam Yulad. Wa lam Yakullahu Kufu al Ahad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this understanding. I want to end, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, with the completion to the hadith, regarding the sacrifice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this day. It's a lesson that makes my hair stand every time I read it, and every time I hear it, and every time I'm taught it. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he sacrificed these two rams, and slaughtered them for the sake of Allah, he went away, for Aisha radiallahu anha to distribute the meat of these rams. And when he came back, he asked her, Ya Aisha, O oh Aisha, what remains? So she happily said, O oh Prophet of Allah, nothing remains illa katifuha. Nothing remains except the shoulder. It's all been given. Now listen, remember we discussed investment versus sacrifice. She said everything has been given. Nothing remains except its shoulder. He corrected her. He says, no, yeah, Aisha, don't say nothing remains except its shoulder. Say everything remains except its shoulder. What you gave for the sake of Allah, that will truly remain. And this shoulder we will eat and this will not remain. Subhana Rabbi al Selflessness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless these words, to make them beneficial. And to make us a people that hear a good word and follow it. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with a blessed Eid and to grant us a day of unity and happiness and putting aside our egos for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and greeting with a complete heart those that we might have differences with for the sake of Allah because this day is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everyone to celebrate 
irrespective of how they feel. Even if you want to be a depressed person, and I don't think anybody wants to live life in depression, but even if you want it to be, you are commanded to celebrate this day. Thus we were forbidden to fast on this day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in His obedience, and grant us death whilst He's pleased with us, and grant us a grave which is a garden from the gardens of Jannah, and grant us place underneath His arsh on the day of Qiyamah, and grant us our book of deeds in our right hands. And may Allah grant us Jannah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ameen, ya Rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, wallahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd.